Hello everybody and welcome back to a republishing of my original ledge hanging and climbing example analysis video that I was pulling from the community forums. Now, the reason that I'm have to redo it, that I have to redo this video is because the original project actually contained paid content. So, because of that, I've actually gone and replaced all of the content in that original example project with Creative Commons content that is legal to distribute. So, this is going to be the most updated project file that you guys will be able to get. Now, the original was not a legally distributable project, but it just happened to make its way on the forums for one reason or another. So, in this, you guys will be able to freely download my reformatted example project, and I will still be leaving up the further content that you guys will see in just a minute or two, but I am going to be trimming out specific parts of the video that are now not relevant. And I also wanted to take this opportunity to address a concern um, from Ketrick of the Construct 2 forums, and I wanted to reprimand my previous statements about the use of the WASD key setup over the arrow keys, because the reason that the arrow keys are a good basis is because the WASD key system only works on essentially what are considered QWERTY keyboards. An international audience may also require the use of an AZERTY keyboard, so to speak. And so if you stick the user with just one setup of the keys, the alphabet keys, you will wind up with um, very angry users who will likely not be able to play your game, or at least not very well. Unless, alternatively, you also create alternative key bindings for your mechanics. So I just wanted to point that out, and I was wrong in the previous video. I'm going to be editing it out and what you're going to see because of what I've realized. So without further ado, let's segue into the original but edited video. Thank you guys for watching, and enjoy! Hello everybody and welcome to an experimental new series that I'm going to be doing in which I analyze and provide to you guys my edited and or updated versions of community examples and projects that have been kind of assembled in Kiatrix thread over the past few years in the how do I section of the constructive forum. Now this is a ledge hanging and climbing system that was I believe originally developed in 2011 but this is still a very relevant example so I wanted to show you guys a bit of my changes and edits to it as well as hopefully provide some more insight into how the project works, what it does, and how to use it and integrate it into your own platform or project. So, Originally, the project used the up, left, and right arrow keys as the control system for the movement. Now, I changed that to the WAD keys because, honestly, that is a more relevant set of keys to most users nowadays. The arrow keys are kind of... actually, to be honest, they're very frustrating to use and they are less useful on most keyboards than the WASD keys. So, I changed the layout a little bit and now shift is the run key, so as you hold down shift, the maximum speed of the platformer behavior of the character changes. And spacebar, if you hold down spacebar, that allows you to, if I can actually do it properly, grab onto ledges. So that's the very basic and fun core functionality of this example. And in addition to some control changes, I also added a few bug fixes of my own. For instance, if you go to hold a ledge here, um, originally, when you would press, when you, if you were to press or hold the A and the D keys, basically just left or right uh, directional commands, you would actually be able to switch the direction of the ledge hold, so you, the player would actually be able to look toward the right and act as if they were holding some sort of invisible ledge on the other side. So this prevents the character from changing direction while they are holding onto a ledge, which is, I'm assuming, the intended behavior of the original project, so I just cleaned it up a little bit. And then I also changed the camera to actually follow the player and smoothly interpolate to the position at some speed, which was actually occurring every tick, but for some reason the camera was actually locked per behavior to the character, so that smooth interpolation was actually never happening. I'm not sure why, I think that was just happened to be something between the edits that they were doing. So this is the basic gist of the project. 
Now we're gonna go straight in and I'm gonna show you guys all of the objects here. Now we have what is called BG. I'm not actually sure why they're called BG. They're basically just platform objects that are the player is meant to be able to jump on and collide with. We have obviously the keyboard in order to be able to detect keyboard commands. And then perhaps most importantly, we have the ledge and the ledge detector objects. Now, the ledge detector object is an object that is attached to the player's location directly in front of at about uh, shoulders level. Now, this is moved with the player so that when they have a ledge to grab onto, or essentially when the ledge detector collides with a ledge object, then we know that that is a valid space for the player to hold onto. So if a player provides input that indicates that they want to attach to the ledge, that's what we do. Pretty straightforward there. And the ledges are strewn throughout the level. These are all hand placed at positions. And these are areas where the player should be able to grab and pull themselves up onto. And then next we have the player object and the player detect object. So what these are are essentially we have the player object and this is a collection of animations. And this collection of animations is attached to the player detect object. Now this greatly simplifies the collision of the player object because if we were to try to use the um, collision polygon of all of these animations and their various frames, then we would have to micromanage all of that. How this is simplified is through the use of this player detect object which has and requires only one collision polygon, essentially. And if we wanted to, for example, create a crouch system, what we could do is we could just add another animation frame that has a collision polygon that is of crouch size, and we would be done. That's it. Um, well, uh, of course, and associate events just to make sure that we know when the player is able to crouch, when they should crouch, if they can crouch, and if there's anything that interrupts that crouch, so on and so forth. And then we also have the tiled background, which is just your standard background that parallaxes in a layer at, I think I set it to 10%. Yes. And so that's it for the objects. Now we can dive straight into each event sheet. Now we have our main event sheet for this would be, this could be reused for all levels. So we don't even, we could even rename this to level sheet if we so wanted to. Um, and we also have to include both the player controls and the player animations event sheet. So. Each one, these these were actually already separated out um, pretty well between the two different mechanics of each, and my primary work was with the player controls. So, first things first, we have actually the scroll speed. Now, this is a global number that I added in, a global variable, that controls how quickly we interpolate the current position of the camera to the location of the player detect. So, I just did a little bit of tweaks here. Um, this is pretty standard. It's nothing really new, but I just wanted to make that kind of kind of clear. And so we have walk and run. Now when the shift is down, when the shift is up, we dynamically change what the speed of the player is, the, sorry, the maximum platform speed of the player is, so how fast they can move to the left or right, as well as their associated animations. Now this is in the player animations because we are using it to control um, essentially the animation state of the player object. We could put it or separate it out into the player controls, but we would just wind up with redundant checks, essentially. So then we have jump, um, pretty standard. Now this is so that, for example, we cannot or we should not be able to jump while we are in a landing state. So that little land animation that the player plays, we do not want the player to be able to jump while that is happening. Now there is now there is a really fringe case where the player can actually continuously jump but i think it's only on one frame and I, honestly i have not been able to debug that one see right there however the check that i implemented does cut out the player it does prevent the player from doing it a lot more often but for all intents and purposes it's pretty polished so then we have the face and motion left and we also make sure that we do not want to change direction if we're climbing or grabbing. Now this is for the this was to prevent the aforementioned bug where you could use the left and right directional keys A and D in order to change your direction while grabbed onto a platform. 
and whenever we do press A or D, we want to make sure that we either set the player to the player and its associated objects to mirrored or not mirrored, and this is so we have a correct looking animation and correct variables involved. So next we have the ability to release the ledge. Now this is pretty straightforward. What you could do is instead of using the release of the spacebar, you could actually implement use of the S key and the WASD in order to set grabbing to false. It's up to you. I find either is pretty acceptable. And then of course, when we set grabbing to false, our player may start falling back toward the ground as expected. Now, this is important. We have the catch a ledge in order to be able to allow the player both to snap toward the position of the ledge, as well as set our grabbing to true. So that way we know that the player is grabbing onto a ledge. Now this happens only when the space first off, only when the space bar is down and when the ledge detect is overlapping a ledge as what I sort of mentioned before. But in addition to that, only while the platform is not jumping and we're not already grabbing or climbing said ledge. Now, this particular condition is not really that needed. It only slightly affects gameplay, and it's really up to the designer to determine whether or not it's useful. So if we were to disable this, that would mean that the player would be able to grab onto a ledge even when they just started jumping. It's not that big of a deal, up to you. And then the snap to ledge is what I mentioned before, where essentially it's like, for instance, when a platform behavior object is going toward a platform or a solid object and going to land on that, we just sort of snap, if it's going fast enough, we can just sort of snap its position um, straight to that platform. It's the same principle with our snapped ledge. So that way we always know what to expect when they encounter a ledge and are attempting to climb it. And then when the player presses the W key, we can actually have them climb. So in this case, we wanna make sure that we can only start climbing when the player is grabbing onto a ledge and then we can set climbing to true, grabbing to false. And then this will also result in the player animation, some of the player animations firing, which will result in the player trying to pull it, looking like it's pulling itself up and yeah. Now this is a little bit more complex in principle. When So when the player lands, we want to make sure that in order to have a predictable animation state, we just basically zero out everything and we make sure that our player's platform behavior just sort of stops and then we can execute animations from there. But that's not as important as to prevent the same movement while the player is grabbing. So this will do the exact same thing while the player is grabbing so that way we can have a predictable animation state. And then finally, <laughs> we have the last two set of conditions. We have the is climbing detection so that when we are placing the player as a result of them climbing the ledge, we don't want it to assume that the player has actually moved or is moving and then trigger the on landed condition of the platform behavior. So this just kind of cleans things up a bit and cleans up the interactions with the player animations event sheet. And then finally, if we are not in a state where we need to play a very specific and pausing animation, then we can make sure that the platform behavior is enabled and we are not ignoring user input for the platform behavior. So that pretty that should pretty much cover everything except the player animation state. Now, in this video, I'm not actually going to be covering the player animations. This part of the project was actually pretty solid and it all seems to work and it flows pretty well. Again, the only issue that I found that I wasn't able to fix was the occasional ability to be able to jump while we are still landing. Um, so if you guys would like to have a go at that, I say have at it. And if you are interested, let me know if you have found a fix for it. I'm sure it's probably pretty simple. It's probably just a, another condition that needs to be met. So that is all for today. I'm going to be posting all the links to all this and everything within the description below. So check it out. And thank you guys very much for watching. If there's anything you'd like me to cover, let me know. If you could actually understand everything that I'm getting at, let me know. I hope I'm not being too vague, too redundant, and I'm explaining it. And I hope that I'm explaining it well. So let me know. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys all later. Bye.